when I first started work as a working adult and got my first job, I remember that I spent the first three months, for most of the time, not working. I would be checking stock prices, reading up blog articles on the best stocks to buy, or even studying the stock markets. Much of my time spent at work was not spent on working. And much of my time towards the end of work was spent looking at the clock, washing up, and wondering when I could go home. That doesn't sound like a very good employee, doesn't it? But today that might be you. You might be working and you might be wondering, oh, when is it time for me to go home? You might be looking at the next holiday and wondering like what leave you can clear. You might be wondering, what am I actually doing at work? And today we wanted to talk about how to have fun at work or why you're so desperate to quit work. Because we hear all those advices, famous commencement speeches by the likes of Steve Jobs that tell us that love what you do and you never have to work another day in your life. And then you look at your own job, at the reality of what you're going through every day. And it sounds like, um, was Steve Jobs really true when he said that? Like, are you sure you can have fun at work? Well, today I wanted to share with you three principles on how you can have more fun at work. But before we started that, I want to share something important. When I talk about fun, I'm talking about spontaneous, unexpected fun. I'm not talking about happiness. Fun is not the same as happiness. Happiness is more like a state of contentment uh, and it's a more steady state. Whereas fun is something more spontaneous, more unexpected, more joyous. Happiness is more like a steady state where you build those elements of happiness within you. So let's begin after this caveat. So why are you not having fun? For most of us, our experiences before work came uh, and our formal education. So it might be university, it might be high school. And during those settings, there was structured spontaneity. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, it was structured because there was timetables, there were alarm bells, and there were clear instructions on what to do. What was the homework you were supposed to do? What was the expectations? Where the margins were supposed to be drawn? What were you supposed to write? How you were supposed to answer the questions? The exam formats? Everything was very structured. And then there were also chances for spontaneity. Well, there were activities that were designed to bring you together to have fun, like sports, or during your physical education classes, or even during the activities when you all went out together to visit the museum or the zoo or somewhere educational. There were these activities that built in spontaneity into your education. And then there were all those chances for relationships. You probably remember those times in high school or university where you just skipped class and you ended up going to somewhere where you wanted to, right? You wanted to go to a movie, you just skipped the lecture. To yourself, you watch the recording, but probably never did. And then these chances for relationships over lunch, over the canteen, allowed for real relationship and trusting relationships to be formed. But now you are at work. And in work, you are in the knowledge economy. Well, what is the knowledge economy? Well, in the knowledge economy, you are setting your own priorities. Uh, No one is going to tell you like, John, this is the work you are supposed to hand in and this is how you're supposed to do it. There's the expectation that when you go to university, you somehow know how to work. Because you have a degree in hand, you somehow know what are the expectations of you. Well, sometimes that's not really the case, right? Suddenly, there's so much uncertainty because you have all these tasks to do, uh, all these job descriptions, these job roles that you're supposed to perform, and you're just 
thrown in at the deep end. And that can be deeply uncertain, can be very anxiety provoking. That might be one of the reasons why you're not having fun. Well, the second reason is you're not sure what the end product actually looks like. Well, for example, if today you were a helping professional, like a social worker or even a therapist, the end product, what exactly does it look like? Right, you are talking to a client, yes. You are required to record case note, yes. Uh, but what does the end product or what does finished or done actually look like? Very often in the knowledge economy, it's not very clear what a good job looks like. So for example, if even you were a HR executive, well, what does a great job as a HR executive look like? Do you know what success looks like for you? Well, it might be more difficult to define, but it's not impossible. In Carl Newport's great book, Deep Work, he says that the markers of deep value, of deep work, is what you are able to contribute above and beyond what is required of someone that does not have your same qualifications or the same skills. So for example, he makes a very clear distinction between shallow work and deep work. And what this means is that in shallow work, for example, a person without the level of training might be able to do, like sending emails, taking calls, replying messages. But for deep work, for example, if today you are a finance professional, uh, without that requisite training in accounting and finance over university or even graduate education, you might not have been able to make those analysis. And that's where the markers of your deep value lie. And so that moves on to the third element of the knowledge economy. You're not very sure what skills you are actually honing. And that makes it hard to have fun because it feels like you're just doing things over and over again with no sense of progress. And that becomes hugely frustrating. Well, what are three principles that can help? The first one is flow. You might have heard of flow, uh, initiated and studied by this Czech psychologist called Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi. Hope I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> Mihaly Csikszen Mihai. And he talks about how flow is like being in the zone. Whenever you watch the Olympics or even a football match, you will see athletes tuning into the zone. They do things like listening to music, they put on their headphones, they tune in. Or it can also be achieved by intense conversation. But what exactly is flow? Well, when you see this graph, you'll see that the flow zone is when you're doing a task which is just outside your comfort zone. And the challenge is engaging you. And you have the requisite skills to meet that challenge. So for example, today you might be a programmer and you were asked to do something crazy, like a coding project. Yes, it's really difficult, but at the same time, it's just outside your comfort zone and you're able to use the skills you have to work on that challenge, the intellectual challenge, the problem, and to feel like you are honing and crafting and deliberately practicing your skills. And so you might think, okay, well, how do you find flow? Firstly, there is a clear challenge as described in Jonathan Haidt's great book, uh, which I really recommend for all of us, uh, The Happiness Hypothesis. Uh, then it's about your skills. Do you know what skills you have? And lastly, there is clear feedback clear and immediate feedback on what you have done. Uh, so an example is the Toastmasters Club. 
you might probably have heard of the Toastmasters Club, which aims to give people, amateur speakers, a platform to share ideas and to build their skills in public speaking and leadership. The beauty of the Toastmasters Club is that it gives immediate feedback. After every single speech that you give, you get an evaluator that allows for you to learn. He gives you reflections on what he thought was good and what he thought could be improved on and this immediate feedback helps you to grow. Well, if today you were looking to find more fun at work, you need to first understand what your skills are. What are your strengths? And if today you struggle to understand what your strengths are, you can try a book like Richard Boles's What Color Is Your Parachute? And that helps you to understand what the skills you have and so that you can use more of them. And then work on the highest leverage tasks that will use those skills. So for example, Shane Malach, the entrepreneur, always loves giving challenge 44 to beginning entrepreneurs. And in this challenge, the entrepreneurs are supposed to create 44 pieces of content that for, for over 3 months that hone their skills and focus on deliberate practice. So for example, if one of your skills you realize is teaching, then one of those content pieces might be video content for every single day for 30 days and then for another 30 days, uh, every 3 days doing a content piece and then for the last 30 days, every week doing a content piece. Uh, that builds up your skill over time and it gives you immediate feedback on what you can improve on over each day. And so even in your work today, understanding what your skills are and how you might be able to use those skills allow you to build up flow in your work and to find greater fun. And the next thing is to think of flourishing. Today, I want to ask you, can you bring all of you to work? Part of why it is not fun to be at work might be because you feel like you are hiding something or bringing your inauthentic self to work. Because of course at work there are so many indicators and KPIs to meet. You're supposed to react or behave in a certain way, you might even be supposed to wear a uniform to work and you're supposed to be sometimes someone you feel you are not and so today i want to ask you can you bring all of you to work and if you feel like you can't uh, that's not an indication that you should quit work but to find and create the fit uh, what this means is that you can take the time to think what is the company asking of me and is this something that I am willing to change? What is the company asking of me and is this something that I'm willing to change? So for example, in every single company, there are a certain set of values that you are asked to inculcate within you. The company has a set of values that they hold to. But if those values do not fit or align with you, then you need to ask yourself, well, is that a value I'm willing to change or adopt and adapt to? And with that, you start to be able to flourish as you align yourself to the company's self. Don't just see the company as another thing uh, but see the company as a person, as someone you can relate to, to be congruent with. And over time, you'll find that you'll begin to have more fun at work as you begin to bring all of yourself to work. The last thing is to find progress. You know, very often when we reach our goals, we find that it is not actually the goal or the achievement that brings us joy. 
but it's the progress and the journey towards that goal that brings us the greatest level of joy. Now, why is this so? Well, because if you reflect back on your last goal that you achieved, you might realize that, okay, I reached success. But there was only a sense of relief. Because yes, you reached there. But your idea of fun came along the journey as you pushed, as you pulled, as you strive, as you thrived, as you work towards your goals. And that's really important to remember. It's really important to remember. It is the journey, not the end point. And so today, I want to share with you a story. Well, in university, I reached the absolute top and pinnacle of what I thought I wanted to achieve. I got the first class honours, I was a board director, and I was speaking regularly and teaching. Those were all things that I wanted to achieve before I came back to Singapore. But I reached the top and found myself entirely dissatisfied with what I had achieved. It didn't matter actually in retrospect what I had done. I reached the top and found that there was nothing there. Today, uh, Jack Higgins, the best-selling author, who once sold uh, more than 85 million books, once wrote, I wish I had known that what I know now. That when you get to the top, there's nothing there. Today you might be in your dream job and you might be wondering why am I not having fun even though I'm at my dream job? And today you might not be at your dream job and you might also be wondering, well, why am I not having fun? Well, today I want to encourage you to start looking for signs of progress in your job towards your goals. So one exercise you can do is Make it a habit that every single day, at the end of the day, write down two things you are proud of and one thing that you feel that you can improve on. This keeps you focused on progress, not perfection. So let go of the need for performance. I know that at work, there are all these KPIs that we need to meet and sometimes that can be really discouraging, especially when we look at how we are not meeting them. You see here, this is a picture of me at a Toastmasters competition. And in my hand is a paper. In my attempt to become more funny, I had created a document filled with jokes entitled joke.doc. For me, jokes and humor had become a performance. It was no longer something natural. And today you might feel that the work that you enjoy has now become a performance where you are in the, where where you are graded on, where your bonus is given to. Well, today take the time to just let go of the need for performance and start with internal validation. Even if your bosses say that your work is horrible, take the time to celebrate yourself, to celebrate the work that you've done, to find progress in your work rather than to wait for external markers or validation like that performance bonus, that great appraisal, that compliment from your boss before you validate yourself. Start with validating yourself. And lastly, let go of the need for perfection. Here you see a cat, right? It's just sleeping on a bench. It's not looking for the best place to sleep. It's just settling for good enough. Today, as young working professionals, finding fun at work often seems like a long drawn process of torturing ourselves, of working harder and harder, and of working to develop ourselves even more and more. It seems like a never ending treadmill, doesn't it? Well, today, I hope you find encouragement from this. 
that by utilizing flow, finding the skills that you're good at, and deliberately practicing and using them, that flourishing at work means bringing your entire self to work, understanding your values and how you might align them with the company's ones. And lastly, in terms of finding progress rather than perfection, you will begin to find more fun at work. I hope this helps and let me know what you thought was the most important takeaway for you in the comments below. Thank you and I hope to see you again tomorrow.